what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. The generation has done with Holy Ghost has reduced him to tongues. Tongues are excellent. But the most important thing the Holy Ghost comes to do for you is that he gives you capacity. Capacity. Notice, dear brother, I want to start teaching now. Notice that when the father came to the two sons, he didn't ask them, can you go to my vineyard? Are you with me? He assumed that they had capacity to walk in the vineyard. And that assumption, God doesn't make assumptions baselessly. God's conclusions and his assumptions are always based upon facts. So for him to be putting that kind of expectation upon his sons is because he knew that they had capacity to walk in the vineyard. He will not ask them to do anything that he did not know that they were able to do. That would be witchcraft. In management circles, we say that that is setting somebody up to fail. You know the person, you know your subordinate cannot do the work. But because she's a girl that you are asking out and she's saying she's a Christian, you now give her a job she cannot do. That's witchcraft. So that when she fails, you now have something to present to the man and say she doesn't know how to work. Or gosh, she's not trained for it. You set the person up to fail. God doesn't do that. So the, the, the father came to both sons, whether first son or last son, he came to both sons on the basis of the fact that he knew that they could labor in the vineyard. You see, dear brother, dear sister, the problem of the Christian is not a matter of capacity. The minute you are joined to Christ, the matter of capacity is already settled. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9, 35. You remember that story, Matthew chapter 9 and 35. The Bible says that Jesus, after seeing the multitudes, he was moved to compassion. He said they were like sheep without shepherd. Then he began to talk about the harvest. As to how the harvest was ripe. Then he says something that is critical. He said, but the laborers are few. Who are laborers? People who can work in the harvest. Jesus did not say, the harvest is ripe and men are few. There was a quality of men he was talking about. Men can be plenty in a generation, but laborers are few. And you may not like the preacher, but the truth is, if you go to our congregations on a Sunday morning, it's full of men, there are no laborers. There are no men you can send into the harvest. They are known. They don't even care about the harvest. Talk less of sending them. They don't even know how to use a sickle. You think it's everybody that can harvest corn? You think it's everybody that can harvest rice? You put somebody who does not know how to harvest farm products in the farm, he will kill all your products. Somebody has been in church for 15 years, he does not know the way of God. He has not been trained, not been taught. All he comes to do every Sunday, every week, is to shout, I receive. <laughs> Meanwhile, those who are serving Satan, there's a rigorous training system. If you become a witch today, they have a program for you to become a master witch in two years. So a three-year-old can be a witch and enter a family of a pastor and kill everybody. She's three years old. She can't even speak, speak three. She can't speak three. Her tongue is still bent. She has not learnt words. Or she will kill everybody, including the pastor. Because the day she became a witch, they didn't start pampering her. Grace this, grace that. They started training. 
It was us, our generation, and the generation of our fathers that turned the house of God into a place of enjoyment. In the days of the apostles, it was a place of training. It was a cantonment. When you got born again, you were trained. That's why when persecution broke out, the Bible says everywhere they went, they were like military men. They were under persecution. No, they should have been running to hide. But if they arrived at somewhere, what they came was with Holy Ghost. They came with the message. Let persecution break out now. People will be entering caves. But in their day, they were so trained that even on that person, they were running with their bags. But if they got to a city, they would stop first and share gospel. So the word of Jesus was spreading even under persecution. Conflict arose in, among them. This one said, I've not eaten. You know, they are using, using wayo to share the food. Peter didn't say, let's go and import people from outside. Skilled people. You know, that's what we do now. Somebody wants to start ministry. He puts a banner on Facebook, says he's looking for volunteers. They didn't say, let's go. And it's because we don't, we don't know the way of training. We want ready-made. Ready-made. Food is ready. Give me meat pie and donut. Or ga. The way of the apostles was a way of training. He said, choose from amongst you. Men full of the Holy Spirit to whom we can commit this business. Choose from amongst you. It's not, it's not once, it's not twice. Me and my brother have been talking. He has been speaking about the choir. You know the joy of a preacher? That people under your hand, you can trace their spiritual journey. And say, this one came like this. But see the way the person is now. The Bible says there was a woman under the influence of the spirit of infirmity. She was bent. She could in no wise raise herself up, but a son of order appeared. People come into our churches bent. They die bent. Nobody ever raises them up. The way they come is the way they die. We even do their burial and sing hymns. Meanwhile, heaven is weeping. That this one lived for 15 years, no impact, no knowledge of God. You can't work with Satan if, if, if you don't get to know him. So people who are in the negative supernatural, they are committed to training, committed to discipleship. My generation likes messages that tell them that God is coming with hamper. And as I woke up this morning, I saw three revelations. God was carrying a golden hamper. The name written on it was Kesena. Then he was carrying a silver hamper. The name on it was Angela. He was carrying a bronze hamper. The name on it was Isaac. Say, take your hamper now. Take hamper by fire. I receive. <laughs> so we have received many things, but there are no laborers in the field. All of us want to work in oil and gas companies. All of us want to sit, sit in a bank with a tie. All of us want to look fancy and beautiful. While, meanwhile, the mission fields are crying. People are dying. When we were getting born again, young men were selling their lives to go and serve Jesus. Parents used to cry, you are my only son. Say, Jesus has called me. My brother shocked me which day. He was telling me that he has not even gone back to his university to collect his certificate. But is that certificate you, you are pursuing that has made you damage your prayer life? Say, I came to school to study. Oh, please, please, I came to study, study. <laughs> Meanwhile, some other people have gone to that campus and they have a track record with Jesus and they still graduated with first class. will come out and enter the, the queue to get a job like everybody else. Meanwhile, what was written concerning you in eternity is that you are a missionary. You waste 25 years working in a man's company. Let it not be that it's two years before you die that you find out that you were in the wrong place. By that time, only two years, it will be too late. You may not even have strength again 
to get up and go. Samson said, I will arise as usual. He wist not. He said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. So in that statement, Jesus makes an assumption that there are already men somewhere whom have grown to a stature where they can be called what? Laborers. If such men did not exist, Jesus would not have been saying, pray the God of the harvest. You know, I need to ask you today, what kind of person are you? Are you a laborer? Can God send you? Can he send you like this? I tell my people back in worry that the reason some of you have not received your visas, even though your destiny is in another place, is because God is not sending you there to look for money. He's sending you there as a laborer. But if you go like this, money will become your God. And God is not emotional. He will keep you here. Walking here. If you do not shift into that stature of a laborer, you will die here. Pray the God of the harvest that they will send laborers. Men are laboring freely for Satan. They labor for him with their lives. We can't find enough people that are willing to labor for Jesus. One of the things that has wounded the body of Christ in my generation is this thing called comfort. Comfort. The quest for comfort. And I'm not against comfort. God has blessed me a little. I'm not against comfort. But some of you, the reason you have lost touch with the reality of the spirit is that you have become comfortable. When you did not have mattress and you were sleeping on the floor, your prayer life was functioning. The day you bought mattress, you can't pray again. When you could not eat, you built a regime around your life. Now that you can eat three times a day, lust has become your friend every week. Comfort. And you see, that's not what I'm teaching now. The day the Lord permits me to teach it, I will show you in the Bible there is nothing like comfortable Christianity. Your Christianity must be costing you something. If it's not costing you anything, it is fake. It's fake. So in the matter of the two sons, the father's concern was not a matter of capacity. Why? The minute you are joined to the Lord, capacity is provided. Romans chapter 8, I think it's verse 9. He says that if anyone have not the spirit of God, it's none of his. What does that mean, my brother? It means that when you get born again, there's a deposit you receive. It's called Holy Ghost. That's the greatest gift God gives to a believer. Himself. There's a dimension of God that you carry. And the whole essence of that dimension of God is to bring you into an economy whereby you are now immune to the things that are happening around you. Attractions, distractions. They can't find a, a place in your, in your civilization. The Holy Ghost begins to work his work on your inside. It is by him you are able to will and to do. According to what? His good pleasure. So when lust is staring you at the face, his life will kick in on your inside and say, you are not that man. The capacity is there. And what is capacity? Capacity is the maximum amount that something can contain. If you use English, the maximum amount. So we can say um, the capacity of this hall is 5,000 people. That's the maximum amount. But capacity is also the amount of something the amount that something can produce. The amount that something can produce. So you can say, the, the capacity of this microphone is 85 decibels. You know, measure sound in decibels. So you say the capacity of this microphone is 85 decibels. That's the amount it can produce. 
and you see when, we, when you apply that to the human life the mortal man your spirit has capacity there's a, there, there's something it can contain when God met that madman of gatherings, out of him came over 6,000 demons. That's how large your spirit is. When those demons were cast out, one pig could not contain it. it, it they had to go into a head. That's what one human was carrying. Hmm. As large as your spirit is, how much of God dwells there? How much of his waters have you drank? How much of him have you experienced in the largeness of your spirit? Is it not because there are certain dimensions of your spirit that are still tied to the attractions and the distractions of this world? So there's not even space for God anymore. The other dimension of capacity is that there is an amount that you can produce he said to them that receive the Holy Ghost they that receive the Holy Ghost to them he gave power he said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you power and you know when the average young person reads that scripture the power they emphasize it power forgetting that that power is not only miraculous that power is what also gives you the opportunity to choose the way of righteousness. It's the Holy Spirit that helps you to walk pure. It's the Holy Spirit that helps you to stay separate. And this morning, where I want to take you to is where you will cry, Holy Ghost. If you don't give me all of you, I, I don't want to go on this journey like this. Why should I go alone? Why? Why? When capacity has already been provided. Bro, prayer is hard. But it's only hard for them that don't know the way of the spirit. There's a way called the way of the spirit. There's a way. There's a way called the way of the spirit. There are days you will wake up. Like I woke up this morning. I wanted to do my normal clock in my normal time of prayer. I woke up. I was tired. But I said, let me just begin. I began. I began. That's how you do it. After a while, the Holy Ghost will kick in and say, yes, bro, I'm here. I'm here. Beloved, I'm here. Then before you know, you are flying. You are flying. That you now, by an act of your will, have to shut the prayer down. Because you need to do other things. It's called the way of the spirit. The father did not say, I don't know whether you can walk. Oh. I don't know whether you know how to clear the vineyard. He said, go and walk. Because if you have received the Holy Ghost, there shouldn't be limitations. There shouldn't be, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be uh, 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 excuses. Or God, the reason you don't like the Bible is because you've not given the Holy Spirit free hand. Bro, he will damage your appetites. He will make you want God. You're in a bus, going home. And the Holy Spirit will just begin to, to walk on your inside. Have you been in conversations with him before? And you have to be fighting back the tears in public. Have you loved him so much that he is the one now encouraging you leave leave you say no i want to die i don't want to be here anymore have you loved him to the point where you have lost interest in life and all you want is do it me as it pleases you do it me as it pleases you ah. Years ago, one of the prayers that the Lord taught me to pray that helped my life was teach me how to love you, Holy Ghost. Teach me how to love you. I want to love you. I want to love you. 
But now my generation is crying about capacity. The matter is not capacity. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The reason it looks like you are incapable is that you have not given the Holy Spirit his rightful place. If he takes his place, you will know that you are stronger than you look. You're not as weak as you think. He said, I don't know why I can't stop my spirit. Oh God, give him his place. Three times Paul cried. He said, take this tongue from me. God did as if he was not hearing. On the third time, he said, oh God, my grace. There's enough. There's enough there. Is sufficient. You can stop stealing. I don't know who the young lady is. While I was taking my bath, I, I entered into the bathroom, just stealing the atmosphere of the spirit. And then I began to hear from afar. At first, I didn't understand what it means. I see you. I see you. I see you. It was getting louder in my spirit. So I had to, I had to stop. I said, Lord, what is this one? He said, go and tell one of my daughters. She thinks she's invisible. She feels as if she's forgotten. He said, I should tell you, I see you. Even if men, it looks as if you, you don't make any meaning to anybody. He said, I should tell you, I see you. I see you. Many of you, what you are crying for is not lost. It's domiciled within your spirit, but you have not built a relationship with him. This is why Benny Hinn wrote a book called Good Morning Holy Spirit. Simple, practical. Wake up in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. I remember the first time I read that book, I was a teenager. And I was wondering how a man could just wake up, read the book, and then the presence of God would just flood his room. I was like, what, what? is this the magic? My brother, it's practice. Many of us talk to Jesus, talk to the Father, but we've abandoned the Holy Ghost. Meanwhile, he's the one that is here. He's the one that was left for your comfort. He's the one that was released to be your guide. How have you been surviving without him? If your guide, you have abandoned him. How, have you, how, did, how did you enter that relationship? How did you choose that course to study in the university? If your guide, you abandon him, it means that it is easy to say that where you are now, you led yourself there. And my brother, the challenge of leading yourself in this journey is that if you lead yourself, you will need to sustain yourself. If he leads you, he will provide supply. There are things called the supply of grace. There are things called the supply of power. There are things called the supply of resources. I was telling you yesterday, you will get to a point in this your Christian life before you cry for a need and you will not even be a big preacher. Before you cry for a need, God will afflict someone somewhere. Say, send my son money. Send my son money. What's the name of that missionary now? Andrew. It's not Andrew Murray. Andrew Murray is a South African. Um, but he was a missionary. He had, he had a, a home for boys in UK. Eh? George Muller. George Muller. Thank you. George Muller. I read his biography and I went to ask God, God, you are Pasha. He said he prayed prayers. None of his prayers were unanswered. None. He never prayed a prayer that did not receive an answer. None. George Muller. None. They come and tell him, there's no bread. What are the boys going to eat? He says, put the plates on the table. Bread is coming. Before they can say Jack Robinson, the baker, the, the village baker or the city baker arrives at the door and says, oh, God will not give me rest. And he brought bread. They say, but are we going to eat dry bread? What about sardine or... <laughs> and he says, don't worry. The milkman in the city is driving back. An angel went and removed the wheel of the truck. The, the truck now breaks right in front of the orphanage. It breaks down there. While the man is struggling with the, 
the wheel. The Lord tells him the milk is for that place. He goes and carries the milk inside. You, you have denied Jesus in your heart many times because you didn't have money. You don't know that there's a realm. There's a realm. You see, brethren, these are the kind of things I pray for. Many times I've told the Lord, I'm still walking not because I'm afraid that you can't take care of me, but because you have not told me it's time. This is where I want to live, Kesena. This is where this is where I want my story to be told. That any time I wanted anything, God sent it. That's the kind of story I want to be. I want to tell. When you know the capacity you have, you can't steal your company's money. You will not sleep with a boy because he wants to give you a recharge card, or he wants to pay your school fees. You hear Christian guys say, you know, it's, it's only my mother taking care of her. I, I, he suffers. Suffer. Auntie, I know people. At least I'm in a higher institution. That's where I lecture. They will rather drop out of school than sell their body. They will rather go and plate hair. But we have people who are speaking in tongues. Little pressure, they cave. because they've not built capacity. Let me read one last scripture. Judges chapter 8. Oh, he's the whole Holy Ghost. Just be playing that for me. I need to hear that lead guitar. The way I'm feeling now, home la makwata. Give me verse 20. You see, this morning service is a self-help service. Now what I mean is, God will respond to you on the basis of your hunger. There are dimensions of the Spirit that are going to be quickened in your life after now. People who have maximized this capacity, they can't be blind. They can't be blind. I say this with all humility. All humility, God sees my heart. If I miss something, my wife will catch it. Nothing takes us on our ways. Some people were misbehaving, misbehaving, misbehaving. Ah, I slept like this. God showed me their life. And how they wanted to leave us. And how they wanted to cause pain. I had not seen that in two days. My wife received it. You can't be blind. The reason you are confused. The reason you are looking at other people who are serving Satan. And you are envying what they have. Is that you don't know you have capacity. You don't know jesus said because i've told you these things now you are sorrowful he said but it is better for you that i go for if i don't go i will not send alos paracletos it's better for you that i go because as i go i will send the holy ghost i don't know the brother i need to tell bro fall in love with the holy ghost love him love him pursue him young man like you will pursue a maiden that you have loved pursue him learn his ways yield to his notions allow him to condition your life if he tells you i don't like this thing don't ask him why look for an explanation i don't want you in that place don't say why say yes sir that's how you walk with the holy ghost because you'll be keeping records of your obedience and every time you obey you gain stature your physical nature might not be changing but you are that capacity of your spirit that is large you are growing in your spirit growing in your spirit growing in your spirit so when the day of adversity comes, you cannot faint. The Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It's not because the, the enemy was strong. It was not a matter of the enemy. It was a matter of your capacity. Gideon had gone to battle with his 300. You remember Gideon's 300? They had gone to battle. In fact, if you read this Judges chapter 8, I'm watching the time. My time is almost done. 
if you read this judges the bible says him and his 300 were exhausted they were tired i don't know how jetta jetta is gideon's son i don't know how he entered the equation probably by the time his father came home with the 300 he decided to follow him as a prince he was a son so he followed his father into battle because he's not one of the 300 now they chased the kings of Midian they chased them even though the army was exhausted they chased them until they caught them and when he got to that point Gideon probably because he was exhausted now looked at his son who was a prince his firstborn he said rise kill them Gideon was making the same assumption that Jesus made why he believed that his son should have capacity part of the training for a prince in the palace was not how to sit down how to eat apart from all those trainings every prince was trained as a warrior because the king was the one that led God's people into battle it was kings that led armies in fact one of the ways to show your valor as a king was that you will win battles so Gideon assumed that Jetta had been training that Jetta had been attending his practices that his men the soldiers have been teaching Jetta how to fight Jetta had a sword you look at him you say what a strong man is his father's son but the day came and he said draw your sword he said but the youth will not draw his sword why he was afraid they don't write fear on the face the day you will know that there is something in your spirit that satan has capacity to use against you is in the day that you face temptation or in the day of your warfare he was a youth and if you hear it you say oh my small boy why would his father carry a small boy to battle go and read the kings the Bible says Goliath was a man of war from his youth. The way they trained boys in those days, from the young age, especially if you were born in a palace, you were taught warfare. His father would not have asked him to draw his sword if it was not normal for youths to know how to wield the weapon. May it not be that God calls upon you and he says, draw your sword and fear. But you see what I like about that story that we began with is that even though the firstborn, this is where I want to end. Even though he first all said, I'm not going. I don't know what happened when his father turned his back. Huh. This is why you must be one with the Holy Spirit. I don't know what happened. What happened in his heart? What happened in his mind? The Bible says he regretted. And he went can you imagine the father coming back seeing the vineyard cleared thinking that he was his younger son only to hear that is the one who said no before that has come my brother you can say yes today if you've squandered your chances with the holy ghost he has given you opportunities before and you threw it away you can repent today it's never too late to begin again the only time it becomes late is when it has ended. Smith Wigglesworth did not begin ministry until he was 50 years old. 50 years old. Bro, I refuse to be alive and have Holy Ghost and not maximize him. I refuse. I will learn his ways. And I do not preach to you as one who was attained. I'm in the school of the spirit. I'm learning. I'm going. I'm begging him every day. Holy Spirit, will you not help me? I want to get to the point where I don't need to tell stories. If I meet a Muslim on the road, all I want to give him is a handshake and let him come under conviction. When we're younger, they'll be telling you, don't eat food outside, though. don't eat food outside, though. don't eat food outside. They can, witches can transfer witchcraft if they give you sweet. 
have Holy Ghost. They touch us. They eat our food. Nothing happens. And yet, if you meet us on the road, we'll say that we have the greater power. We have the higher authority. Which is if a witch enters here now and she wants to damage a woman's pregnancy, she can sit on a chair and get up. If the woman sits there, the baby will come out. How many times have you gone to campus and lay down on your roommate's bed and got up and the person lay there and woke up speaking in tongues? If you sell anything in the market, they should buy what you sell and touch Holy Ghost. You shake somebody's hand, their heart should begin to burn. But my generation does not know Holy Ghost. We look like we don't have capacity. It's a lie. The problem is a matter of engagement. We have not engaged him. We've not loved him enough to pay the price to find him. Oh, he's the whole Holy Ghost. Spirit of the living God. Oh, he's the whole Holy Ghost. King of Kings, I'm an Akubila man. He's the whole Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Age to God. He's swinging in everything. Oh, King of Kings. Why are we listening? Listen, listen. See, see. I'm not trying to be emotional. 